Um, and let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17. This morning I feel like worshipping the whole service. But then out of discipline, then I have to, yeah, I have to go to the word. But as for me, even when I did not preach, if we just worshipped and worshipped and worshipped for the whole service and then go home, no, it's, it's, it's worth it. Amen. Are you there? Let's go to a Bible person, Exodus chapter 17. Let's stand for the reading of the word. I think we'll, we'll read the whole chapter. It's, it only has 16, 16, 16, um, 16 verses. Then all the congregation of the children of Israel set out on their journey from the wilderness of sin according to the commandment of the Lord and camped in Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore, the people contend, contended with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. So Moses said to them, Why do you contend with me? Why are you angry with me? Why are you striking against me? Why do you tempt the Lord? Right? And the people thirst there for water. And the people complained against Moses. Why is it you have brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord saying, what shall I do? With these people, they are almost ready to stone me. So the situation was worse. They are ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, go on before the people. The same people are complaining, go, go in front of them. Take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand, uh, take in your hand, your rod with you and struck the river, uh, struck the river and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock of Horeb and you shall strike the rock and water will come out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the contention, contention of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord. I wonder how did they tempt the Lord? Maybe we're going to answer that. They tempted the Lord because they were thirsty. Saying, is the Lord amongst us or not? So they judged God based on provision. Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in, in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us some men to go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill or the mountain or top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek and Moses and Aaron, no, Moses, Aaron, and who, who 
Ha, ho, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. Okay, Moses and who <laughs> went up to the top of the hill, right? And so it was. When Moses held up his hand, his hand, one hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy. In other words, he was tired. So they took, the, took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it. And Aaron and who supported his hands, one on the other side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Then the Lord said to Moses, write this for the memorial of, for the memorial in the book, recount it in the hearing of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heaven. And Moses built an altar and called it and called its name, the Lord is my banner. Father, we thank you. Speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now be seated. Um, was that a long read? Maybe it's a long read because I'm a slow reader. You know, I don't know how to read, but I need to be slow in order to, you know, to read right, you see. Some other people would have finished in, in one minute, you see, but, but as for me, no, we're not the same. I repeated my metric three times, so we're not the same. We're not gifted the same. Everyone must stay in his gift. Amen. Maybe seated. Now, this morning, I think I, I, I'm really, I, I don't know. Um, I want to speak to you about the principle of the first things. You get me? The principle of what? The principle of the first things. God has a tendency of honoring the first you get it? So that's why he says that seek ye first the kingdom of God. Right? And, 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 and its righteousness. Then God says what, all what you need is going to come. But it says that you have to honor the, the principle of the first things. In other words, you are on earth. But the earth is not first to you. The world is not first to you. But the kingdom of God is the first to you. Are you hearing that? So there are some people in the world, in the, in the Bible that God blessed because he says that you have honored my name. You have honored my name. You have, you have held your name high in your heart. Then God released a certain blessing because people are honoring the first, the, the principle of the first things. So God is the first in everything. Is that clear to you? All right? So we see it everywhere in the Bible. We see it everywhere in the Bible. We see it with the firstborns. God said the firstborns are mine. You remember in the Old Testament, he said firstborn. He said everything that opens the, that opens the womb is mine. That's how God put it in the Old Testament. He says everything. In other words, if you have the first child, according to God, that child is not yours. It's his. Is that clear to you? If you have the firstborn with your sheep, 
that sheep must go to the temple and be given to the priest because it's not yours. It belongs to God. So everything that is first, then God claims it. If you check very well, all your salaries, let's say, let's speak about salaries. Your salaries are in tens or in hundreds. So you have, you receive 5,000 rand or 10,000 rand a month. There are there are tens there. There's the first. If you if you give the tithe, you are giving the first. You are giving the first of your of your income. Are you hearing that? You are giving what? The first, so that God can keep you, provide for you, and 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 keep you know you know and bless you. Now, I will come back to that to the first things because I'll come back to it. But I want us to. To check something here, God tells the people of Israel, or people of Israel, number one, they complain. You know, they, they needed water, right? You know, and they said, is God amongst us or not? You know, they judge God on the basis of provision. That is the most, that, that, that oh, can I teach you this morning? Because, I don't know, maybe I will preach, but, but I feel a teaching anointing. They judged God based on provision. There are people who feel that God is with them because they, they have something to eat. They have airtime on their phones. They have petrol in their cars. They are paying their bills very well every month. So they feel that God is with them. But the issue is that there are people who don't like God and who hate God and who are Satanist who are having their bills paid. The richest people in the world are not saved. Bill Gates does not care about God. Did you hear? Are you hearing me? Mozape is not a born again believer. But he has almost all his needs on earth met. Are you hearing that? So you cannot judge God based on provision. A person who is saved, who is a beggar on the street, has Jesus. Greater is he that is in him than he that is in the world. So the millionaires of this world, God does not honor. He can honor the person on the street because that one probably trusts God. That God, today, I trust you that you'll provide for me. I trust that somebody will, will be generous to me and give me something so that I can sleep hungry. You, do you know that beggars pray? But there are people who don't pray, but they have everything they ever need. Is that clear to you? So, which means that you cannot judge God if he's with you or not on the basis of provision. So, you can be without and still have God. So, God being with you is not based on material things. Material things are not a sign of intimate relationship with God. If you become a millionaire now, that's not the sign of communion with God. It's not a sign. Yes, it's the sign of his goodness, but it's not the sign of relationship. I'm not sure you get me. Do you get me? So in other words, you don't say that God, I think that sister so-and-so fellowship is more with God. Look at the provision. No, 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 no. You, you can't say that. Is, that point is clear, right? So God says to them, Moses says to them, we are tempting the Lord. Why? Because they are asking if God is with them or not, looking at the situation they were faced with. All right? So you may be in a terrible situation right now. Terrible situations are not the sign of, that God is not with you. Are you hearing me? Struggle in life is not the sign that God is not with you. 
Feeling lonely is not the sign that God is not with you. Being sick and in ICU and with pipes is not the sign that God has left you. Being in the car accident is not a sign that God has left you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In other words, in whatever circumstance, whatever situation, whatever problem, whatever pain, whatever question that you may have, God is still with you while you are asking if he is. Not sure, maybe you don't like this message this morning. Does it make sense to you? Let's move it. Then God says, he says that you are tempting God, you know, because they are asking if God is with them, right? And then God says to Moses, he says, I want you to solve the problem of the people. I want you to be in front to take the first position towards destiny. Maybe as God was speaking to Moses, maybe Moses was just among the people. But God says, no, come out. Leave the people. Go in front of them. So God is not going to tell Moses to go in front if he was in the front. Oh, I wish I could talk to you. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So God says, be in the front. Be in the front of the people. It does not matter who says what. Be in the front. Why? You are a leader. So God says, be the first. Right? Be in the front. Be the one that is ahead of people. Take the position of leadership. And let the people make peace with that and follow you. And when you are ahead and do what I said you must do, then the provision of the people will come. The provision of the people will only come when you take your position. People will be provided with water when you take your position. People will come out of thirst when you take your position. The principle of the first things. So Moses did that. He was in front of the people. And then did what God said. And he said, God said to him, when you are in front of the people, make sure that you have a rod in your hand, which is the sign of the anointing, right? You have, the head, uh, you have your, your, your rod with you. You're right? Okay? Make sure that you have the rod. Because God is not going to provide just for the person who takes the first position, but he has no anointing. Then God said, you go there, you lift up the, the rod, you strike the rock with the rod. And Moses said, the rod of the Lord. The rod comes from the Lord. The rod is given to Moses, but from the Lord. So Moses has to use something that is coming from the Lord in the first position to provide for the people that are following him as a leader. So he has to have something of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, it is very dangerous to follow a person who takes the first position, but he does not have something from the Lord. I'm not sure you understand what I'm trying to say to you. You know, there, there are many churches and sometimes big churches, but some other times people are following people who are occupying the first position, but they don't have something from the Lord. You must make sure that there is something from the Lord. Did you hear what I'm trying to say to you? 
If you come to church and the church is dry and there's no Holy Spirit and there's no anointing and there's no moving of God in this place, then I, I give you the right, take your bags and go to another church because you'll be following the wrong man. There has to be something from the Lord. When you come to church, you must experience something that comes from God. You must know that God is here. So, so then Moses takes the, he takes the rod from the Lord and then, 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 I, I want you to check something, please. I want you to check something that people are complaining not to God, but to Moses. Did you hear? They are complaining about God, but not to God, but they are complaining to Moses. Right? And the Bible says there was contention. And Moses says, why is this contention? Why do you content people content with me and things like that? Now, let me tell you something. These people believed that you, Moses, you are anointed. You, Moses, you are not anointed for yourself. You, Moses, you are not called for yourself. You, Moses, are called for us. So, Moses, we shouldn't suffer in your presence, if you are anointed, there should be movement in our lives. Am I teaching in this house? Oh, I'm not sure. So, though it looks bad over there, but on the other hand, it looks good because the people are pressing the demand on the anointing of Moses. They got provided for because they pressed the demand. They pressed the demand. So after they pressed the demand, then their needs were met. But the amazing thing is this. Moses is struggling with God as people are struggling with him. That's a tension of being a pastor. He's struggling with God. But people, as a result of people struggling with him. Are you hearing me? But on the other hand, we get the principle there. That if you follow an anointed pastor, then there has to be an evidence of his grace and anointing upon your life. I'm not sure if you get me that. You get me that? You get me that? Now, let's leave that alone. It's for the other day. Let's move because it will, it will uh, derail me. Right. So they are provided for. Because the people complained and did not believe, then terrible thing happened. Because God does not like complaint. God loves faith. And the Bible says that it is impossible to please God without faith. So God was not pleased with the people of Israel. Why? Because they complained. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter who you are, a complaining person is exhausting, is, is tiring. I, 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 you know, when a complaining person calls you, you, you feel like, should I take this call or not? Because, oh, she will hold me for, for two hours. <laughs> you know, you get that. So uh, complaining people are tiring. So God also get, gets tired, gets tired. He does not like complaining. But this is how God calls complaining in the Bible. He calls it murmuring. The people of Israel attracted bad happenings and bad curses as a result of murmuring. And the Bible says they murmured against God and the Bible then tells us the terrible things that happened to them as a result of murmuring to God. God gets angry at murmuring believers. You rather choose faith instead of murmuring or complaining. Are you hearing me? Now, as a result of this, then 
in the same chapter. Can you please go to, I think it's, no, 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 is it verse that, no, the, the verse that says that then the Amalekites came and attacked. Ladies and gentlemen, if you live a life of complaint, attacks will come to your life. Are you hearing me? You will never come out of the situation that you are complaining about not believing God for. You never come out of it. If you can check the politics, there's, there's no good president where people complain. They will never. We're going to vote again the president is good as, as soon as he's new in office. Then after that, we complain. Then we want another one that we're going to complain about and want another one. So things will never come right as long as people complain. But if you check the countries who believe in their presidents and, and some of them who just give, you know, I think like Russia, is it Russia? That has given like 30 years to Putin or something like that. Just, just look, at, look at that confidence. Yeah, you, 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 you would have to look at their economy, look at their lives, and th because they have confidence in their leader. Uh, yeah. No, no, look at China. Just look at China. Look at how the China is taking the world. You see? Because have you ever had the, the, the elections in China? Huh? Yeah, that man is there just all the time. Yeah, and China is doing good. And us who keep on changing presidents, we are in the mess. Because we are, we are looking for somebody to trust. But we only trust them when they, are, they, are just, they just have come to office. And after that, we don't trust them anymore. So where there's complaint, there will be always hassles and hurdles. Are you hearing me? Now, then the Amalekites got a chance to attack Israel. They came to attack Israel. And then Moses saw the danger. And then Moses said, when people were lacking water, God said, I must go first and take a lead among the people. So Moses now has learned the lesson. Right? Then Moses said, okay, the Amalekites are attacking us. Then Moses said, okay, right. I will take the first position. In fact, now, not just the first position, the high position. I will go on the hill or on the mountain, on the hill. And it says that I will lift. It's not God who told him. Now he has learned how God provided with water. He has learned the system by which God is what? Is working. Then Moses said now, okay, if I take my position, then people will be provided for. If I take my position, then the Amalekites we're going to defeat. Is that clear to you? So Moses learned it. Then now he went to the mountain. He said, I will go on top of the hill. All right? With the rod of God in my hand. Moses says that everything has to be about God. If his victory is about God. If his provision is about God. Whatever that we are, whatever that we achieve, it has to be about God. Then he took the rod of God. And he was on the mountain. Now look at this. Then on the mountain, as is on top of the mountain and lifting up his hand. The first time it says that his hand. Then at the end, we saw that he lifted up now his hands. Moses lifted up his hand. And the Bible says, as his hand got tired, then people of Israel who were fighting the war died. And then the Amalekites were winning. Then because this hand is tired, then he lifted another hand. And when he lifted the hand, then the Israelites and Joshua were winning the war. But at the end, we saw that when the victory came, it was not only the hand of Moses that was lifted, but hands 
of Moses. Did you, did you see that in the Bible? Am I the only one who sees things in the Bible? When hands were lifted, then victory was brought. When the hand was lifted, Israel was making progress. But when the hands were lifted, then victory came. Then the Bible says that as the mo hands of Moses were tired, then Aaron and who provided a place for Moses to sit. Moses was standing. Then they went and took the rock. You get what I'm trying to say here? They went and carried not the stone. The Bible said the rock, right? Which was maybe, you know, I don't know they took Moses to the rock or they carried the rock. I don't know. Right? But I know there's something rocky about the whole entire thing. Right? So, they, 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 I don't know who, supported his hands and one or the other hand, blah, 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 hands until blah, blah, and all of those, they came heavy and they took a stone or the stone, right? They took the stone. Now, you, get, you need to know that, how many of you know that stone is heavy? That kind of stone you can sit on. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about the stone that you can hit the head of a person boom, like that, you know? But the stone to sit on. So they carried the stone to Moses. Because Moses had to, to maintain his position. But in his position, he was tired. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, you can be in your position and tired. You can be in your place and tired. You can be in the, in, in the place where God wants you and be exhausted and be tired and be fatigued, but you are in the right place. Oh, I know that I'm teaching this morning. That you are tired, that you, are, that you lose faith, does not mean that you are in the wrong place. That you don't feel good does not mean that you are in the wrong place. Even in the will of God, you can get tired, you can get finished. That's why the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They, they, they don't leave the position, but they pray in the position and they renew the strength in the same position where God wants them to be. Oh, I'm not, I'm not sure I understand what I'm trying to say to you. I, I, mean, I mean, if you're in the church today, and you are, you are part of us and you say, I don't hear the bishop now. I don't feel the power when he preaches. I don't feel anything. It, you, it, yeah, it, it will happen. It will happen. But, but, but don't leave your position. Uh, touch your neighbor and say, don't leave your position. It does not mean that when you feel bad, when you don't hear right, that you are in the wrong position. You are still in the right position, but you just have to stand. Because the Bible says that when the spirit of the ruler is raised, is raised against you, the Bible says, do not leave your position. You have to maintain your position. When you are tired, maintain your position. When you are in faith, maintain your position when you are out of faith maintain your position when you feel encouraged maintain your position when you feel discouraged maintain your position so here, here's the issue you know you know what I'm doing I hold the mic whether I feel good or feel bad whether I feel encouraged or feel discouraged whether I trust God or I doubt God I I, <laughs> I do this this has nothing to do with feelings but it has something to do with revelation so I have to do it I have to do it even when I don't know what I'm doing it for but I have to do it why because he has called me to do it he has not called me for sense he has called me for duty and responsibility 
Does it make sense to you? So Moses took the pledge, the position, then they provided the stone. Ladies and gentlemen, many churches are struggling to provide the stone for their pastor to sit when he's tired. Everybody loves the pastor who stands. I know I'm teaching this morning. Now, I'm giving you the message that I give to many churches as I travel. I'm now, now, this week, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be going soon. I'm going to go into Nigeria to be preaching over there. Uh, you know, and after that, I go to the States and go different places. I, I build churches. This morning, God said, what you do to other churches, do it to your church. I've shared messages in churches. They've built their auditoriums. They've bought the land out of my teachings. So God says, take this home. Many churches don't have a place for their pastors to sit and rest when they are tired. Everybody People don't like a tired pastor. Hmm. People love a jubilant. Yeah. If I can tell you now that I'm struggling with my faith, many of you will leave. <laughs> you, you, are, you, are you hearing me? Yeah. yeah. If I say now, you know, I'm struggling and, and, and wah, 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 that, 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 that. But just leave. Yeah. Some pe people don't like a pastor who's weak. Oh, I'm not sure you understand what I'm trying to say to you. Uh, hey guys, can, can I speak today? You, you want me to preach or to teach? You'll get a lot when I'm teaching. People don't like a pastor who's weak. That's why millions of Israels are not on the mountain. Only two are on the mountain. Because not everybody can carry the weakness of a pastor. I wish I could talk to you. 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 Are you, are you hearing me? Okay, let me say this. Let me say this again. Do you remember Jesus? When he was struggling in Gethsemane. How many disciples were there? Was it 12? No, it was not 12. Because the nine cannot stand a pastor who's crying. I oh, wish I could talk to you today. Are you hearing me? Because they cannot stand. Because they wanted a pastor who calls Lazarus from, from, from the grave. They want a pastor who says to, Bart to Bartimaeus, see, you know, you know, who open the blind eyes. They want, they want a pastor who's healing the lepers, you know, who's healing diseases and leprosy, who's performing miracles. And uh, they want that type of a pastor. But... They don't, like, they don't understand that the pastor is as human as they are, but only anointed. Let me repeat it. The pastor is as human. Moses is as human. In fact, he's got brothers and sister. He's got Miriam and he's got Aaron. So, he himself is in the flesh. He is not an angel. So many churches don't have a place for their pastors to sit when it gets weak. So Paul puts it this way. <laughs> I mean the great Paul. He puts it this way. He said, it was given to me a thorn in the flesh by the angel of Satan, not of God, of Satan. Having a pastor who preaches to you, but he's got a thorn, not from God, but from Satan. Uh, I wish I could talk to you. I'm, I'm going to leave you. I will finish this message the other day, but uh, I hope you'll tell me. Are you hearing me? Yeah. I think the church will prefer a thorn that comes from angel of God. But Paul says, a thorn in my flesh, yeah? coming from the angel of who? Angel of who? Come on, class. 
of Satan, right? So the angel of Satan, right? Okay. Hmm. And then Paul said, I prayed three times. He was raka ba 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 In the name of Jesus, I remove. In the name of Jesus, I remove. In the name of Jesus, I remove. <laughs> then God says, uh, boy, he said on third time, God said, boy, I don't want you to come to me for the, th for the fourth time. <laughs> he said, boy, I'm not going to take away. Yeah. He said, <laughs> He said, I'm just going to give you grace to, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to give you grace to carry the thing. Yeah. But that thing is not going to leave you. Right. Oh, now you have a pastor who feels that God is teeming with Satan <laughs> to destroy his life. <laughs> I'm not sure you hear me now. Are you hearing me? So God says, now, I, I, I'm not going to take it away. Now, look at this now. And Paul says, it was given the flesh, to the flesh. Now, this is how you should understand it. Paul calls his struggle thorn. Because he cannot say it as it is to the church. Because if he says it, they will stop believing in him. I can't believe my pastor has... The <laughs> you know, so now he has to use wisdom and say thorn. That was not a thorn. It was a struggle with flesh. I don't know with what. It does not tell us. But what we know is that the man got weak. I wish I could talk to you. A man got weak. A man got weakness. Then he called his weakness thorn. Why does he call it thorn? Because it does not sit well in his spirit. But he's still preaching to, to the people. And he calls it thorn. And, uh, and he's not prepared for anybody to ask him, what is that thorn, uh, man of God? <laughs> so are you hearing me? So many churches are struggling to have a pastor sitting. My question is that, if I come to the level of weakness, of tiredness, of exhaustion, of spiritual fatigue, in this church, is there a stone for me to sit? Hmm. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Is there a stone? No, but, but, but I want you to understand something. Moses is tired, but the rod is not tired. The anointing is not tired. Is the man who's anointed tired. But the anointing is still, still sharp. The anointing still works. The anointing still produces victory. The anointing still blesses Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, the anointing does not get tired. Are you hearing me? The Bible says Peter. Peter was tired. Doing the healing in the church because there's a strong healing anointing. You know what? The people said you don't need to lay hands. They just said, Peter, just come in the day and as you pass, your shadow will heal the people. He's tired, but the anointing is still working. He has no strength, but the anointing is still working. Are you hearing me? I'm trying to say that a tired pastor is still beneficial a weak pastor is still beneficial you don't throw pastor away his anointing can still benefit you in his low state sit now this message, minister, is, this is, 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 is not going to finish today. Now look at this. Noah. The Bible says Noah was drunk. Drunk and naked. It's another thing to be drunk, but it's another thing to be drunk and naked. Yes. So this is, that's worse. <laughs> Noah 
was drunk. <laughs> no, was drunk <laughs> and naked. <laughs> but now, here is the test. He was the chosen of God. Right? And then they came and saw his nakedness but never reacted the same. The other one saw the nakedness and associated nakedness with lack of faith and, and disbelief and everything. And that one, the Bible says, that son received a curse from the father. Now the father is naked, but everything he says still happens. Oh, don't get me. Are you hearing me? A father is what? Come again, class. But what comes out of his mouth so you cannot say because he's naked, what he says to me will not happen. This morning, I'm not sure if I'm teaching. Are you still following me? Are you sure? So the nakedness, <laughs> so which means the anointing does not live because of nakedness. is still there. The most dangerous people on earth are the broken pastors. That's why if I meet a broken pastor, I become very careful of what I say. I become very careful of how I react. I become very careful on how I treat him. Because pastors are more dangerous when they are weak. I mean me as a pastor, I'm talking about other pastors. So now, in fact, I look for the ways on how to be a blessing and not to judge. Do you know why the church is weak? Do you know why the church is eaten by cancer, eaten by sugar diabetes, and eaten by different diseases and other things is the way they treat the anointed is the way they spoke, they speak about the anointed on Facebook. Is the way they attack the pastors. Yeah. It's when pastors get weak, then the church kills them. Church is the only army that kills its wounded while in the war. They don't kill the enemy, they kill theirs. They kill their own. Well, I wish I could talk to you. I mean the church, they kill their own. Don't you know that we are the army of God? Don't you know the Bible says we must fight the good fight of faith like the soldier of Jesus Christ? Don't you know? Don't, don't you know that we are the soldiers in the kingdom of God? Don't you know that Paul says that we must put the whole armor of God and he's not speaking to the pastor, he's speaking to the church. Don't you know that we are the... So the terrible thing is this, is that pastors sit in the office and listen to people's stories and cover people's doo-doo. You know what is doo-doo? If you don't know what is doo-doo, you know what is doo-doo? They cover people's doo-doo, people, people's everything, cover the people encourage the people blah, blah. but when is their turn to be covered they get exposed instead of being covered I wish I would talk to you are you hearing me when it's time for them to be supported no support when it's time for them to be understood no so because people expect pastors to be God always standing and always powerful all right? Okay, let me, let, that's not my message. Why did I go there? Now, let, let, let's, let's come to this. So what is happening? How did they get victory? The Bible says then the victory was, the victory was wrought and then Joshua and his people, they conquered the Amalekites. The Amalekites are the strongest nation, arrogant, 
powerful nation. But Israel conquered. But Israel did not conquer through the muscles of, uh, uh, through army muscles, but they conquered spiritually. Why? Because Moses took his place. Because when he was tired, they supported the anointing. So they made sure that the anointing is sitting in a comfortable place. Ladies and gentlemen, when the anointed is comfortable, victories are assured. Um, are you hearing me? Uh, let me repeat it. When the anointed is comfortable, victories are assured. The reason why in other churches there's one guy who's a businessman is, is, is the only one who's rich, but the pastor is poor. There's no balance there. The pastor is poor. The pastor is trusting God for his children's school fees. The pastor is what, what the pastor is always in need. When you give, you are providing a stone for your Moses. When you prioritize the principle of the first things, when you prioritize Moses, you are prioritizing yourself. You are prioritizing your family. You are prioritizing your children. You are prioritizing your career. You are prioritizing your promotion. You are prioritizing because everything will spring from there. Because when God chooses a man, he does everything through that man. The president that sits in power determines the economy of the country, determines the breakthrough of the country, determines the protection of the country. The president who sits determines the livelihood of the people. Principle of first things. So God says, everything that comes out of the womb, first thing, it's mine. How do we benefit? The Bible tells us, remember, that Reuben was the firstborn of Jacob, right? Of the, yeah, the sons of Israel. Now, look at this. And the Bible says that one day they hated the brother, Joseph. They hated the brother, Joseph. They put him, they, no, no, they did not put him in the pit. They wanted to kill him. They were, in fact, they were sharpening the sword to kill him. But the Bible says the firstborn named Reuben said, Let's, let's not do this thing, man. He's our brother. Let's not do it. Let's rather put him in the pit. Right? Now, putting him in the pit, he, he knew that he was going to scream. And the people who are passing will hear the scream and they will help. But the whole boys, the whole sons of Jacob, they, 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 they believed the voice of their firstborn. And they adhered to that in their wickedness. Okay, oh God, oh God, I don't, know what, I don't know how my time is going today. I think in their wickedness of wanting to kill their brother, in their evil wanting to kill their brother, in their wickedness wanting to kill their brother, they listen to the voice of the first bond. So when they listened to the voice of the firstborn, then they said, okay, Reuben, we're going to do as what you said. Then they took Joseph and put him into the pit as, as they agreed and all of that and not kill him as Reuben refused that they should kill him. But they had a choice. They could just kill him w without listening or obeying what, what Reuben was saying. Are you hearing me, somebody? So, so they listened to, 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 to him. But look at this. By listening to Reuben, they did not know that they were saving their lives. They did not know that the same Joseph, when there is drought, when there is hunger, when there is uh, terrible things that were happening in their land, that they will go to Egypt and the same person that they would have killed is the one that took care of them with their children 
gave them the place in Egypt gave them the place called Goshen they became millionaires by listening to the firstborn saving their lives I'm not sure you understand what I'm trying to say to you I'm saying that when we adhere to the principle of faith of first things many things will be saved many things will be protected many lives will be saved things will happen promotion will happen blessings will come because we honor the principle of the first thing that a person who belongs to the first position we put them in the first position and we protect them in the first position and by that we are saving our lives the same Joseph they wanted to kill was the same Joseph who saved their lives was the same Joseph who fed their children was the sa same Joseph who was a ruler of Egypt was the same Joseph who gave them the land they become they became property owners the land owners in Egypt had they killed him I don't know how their situation would have been they would have died in famine they would have died many of their generations would have died in famine ladies and gentlemen the reason in churches we are not influencers we are not influencing the community we are not taking the community or any church that puts its leader in its in his first position any church takes over the community any church that honors the principle of first things will take the community over. Any church where the leader is visible, where the leader is loved, where the leader is protected, where the leader is taken care of, where the leader is not in poverty, when a leader has his all needs met, that church will never lack. No, I'm not sure you get me. Do, do you get me? You see, for example, I'm, I'm thinking about this church, you know, some of the people. There's a church called, uh, is it C, C, K, C, C, C what, what, what? No, it's, it's uh, the Art Boshov. You know, some of you know. It's CRC. It's at Boshov. You can see, he's very visible. He's the main man. And everybody has allowed him to be the main man. That's why that church is taking everything over. Because there's no contention. Are you hearing me? Because there's no compromise of his discipline. He has another church, Christ Embassy, by Chris Yakalome, taking over over 12 million members around the world why that man has taken his position and his church believes that he should occupy that this is the kingdom mindset it's the kingdom mindset so CKLI this morning God is challenging you. I remember that when Elijah went to the widow, you know the scripture? Went to the widow. Is it, is it Elisha or Elijah? I don't even remember. It's Elijah. Elijah went to the woman. Is it the woman of Zarephath? I think it's the woman of Zarephath. When Elijah went to the woman of Zarephath, you know what happened? Take, take water as well, please. Yeah, a woman of Zarephath? God said to him when he was in need who was in need? The prophet, right? He was in need. He was, he was in need and in hunger. Instead for God to keep on providing for him then God tells him about the woman and he said I've prepared a woman of Zarephath. That woman will supply your needs. You get it? 
But the, the issue is this. When it comes to the woman, the woman is also in hunger. <laughs> but God said the woman will provide. Did you hear what I'm saying to you? The woman says, if you read the scripture, the woman says, I am just, we are just collecting the sticks with my son and we'll eat our last meal. And after that, we will die. Then God sends his men to a, to a woman who's planning suicide. Who's saying after this, we die. Okay? That's how God sends us. He sends us to frustrated people. He sends us to people with no identity. He sends us to uh, rape victims. He sends us to people with broken background. He sends us to people who have no name. He sends us to people who... You, you get, I'm not sure you get, you, you get me. So then he sends us there. But he says this very same people are the ones that will meet our needs. Oh, ish. God, 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 yeah, God is so wise. I hope you forgive me for not preaching as I normally do. God is very wise. He sends a person who's got needs to the people who have more needs. And then he trusts the people who have more needs to supply for the men that he has sent. And then we are blamed. Ah, pastors, ah, they eat money from people, from poor people, brother. God said, <laughs> Tell God say that they, the poor people should supply. <laughs> as poor people, as poor they as poor as they are, then God as they supply, then God will supply for the supplier. So when, God, when, when, when Elijah came to the woman, he said something very intriguing. He said to the woman, he said, prepare for me first. Yeah. When the woman says that, no, we just have some, we have the, the, the last food, you know. It's not even, the woman explained it further. He said, the food is not even enough for me and my child. Yeah. So in other words, I will eat, but I will still not be filled. My boy will eat and will not have his fill as well. So both of us will just... Will, we, we are dividing something that's not enough, <laughs> but, but we don't have a choice. After this, we, we, we die. All right? Then the man of God comes and has a nerve in that situation to say, prepare for me first. Did you read the Bible? Yeah. Or should we go to that scripture if a Bible person can go there? Then, then, then he said, prepare for me first. The principle of first things. Who do you prioritize will determine your destiny. Will determine your provision. Will determine your breakthrough. Breakthroughs are about priority. Blessings are about, are about priority. She said, as the Lord your God lives. You, can you get this? As the Lord God your li lives. I do not have bread. You know what Elijah said? He said, give me bread. You know, give me bread. The Lord said, you're going to provide bread for me. Did you get that? The Lord said what? You're going to do what? You're going to provide bread for me. So, Elijah, Elijah is coming with the word of the Lord, believing what God said, and is not willing to compromise it. Didn't you read in the Bible when Paul in the book of First, I think First Corinthians chapter 9, if I'm not mistaken, or second, I don't know. He said, he said, he said, don't you know that those who work in the temple eat from the temple? Those who work at the altar eat from the things that are coming from the altar. I'm hearing all people say, pastors must go to work. I am not going to work. <laughs> pastors must work. Pastor, no, no, no. Others must work. No, no, I'm not going to work. I'm not. I'm one person that will not go to work. I will not go there. 
unless if I feel a release that God wants me to go to work. But at this time, I'm not a working type. And that I'm not a working type does not mean that I'm lazy. It is, I know myself. We are not the same. I'm not blaming pastors who work, but me, I'm not going to work. I am working in the temple. I'm working at the altar. I will eat from the altar where I'm working according to the will of God. And I'm not, I'm not afraid to say everything I have and everything I own, own and everything I've achieved is from the altar of God. I am proud of that and I will always be proud of that. No matter who says what, the word of God is final to me. No, by that I don't mean that I will not do. I do businesses. At least I can do business. Yeah. You know? But altar is the number one thing to me. So he says, prepare for me first. And then the woman prepares for him. Then he speaks the word. As you prepare for me, the flower will not finish. And the oil will not are you hearing me? So now he speaks the word because he knows he is sent by God. As a pastor, if you're not sure if you are sent by God or you send yourself, you will not be confident. But I know that I'm sent by God. So if you are sent by God, you eat that flour, my God, that oil. You are sent by God. You, you eat that. If confident baby confident baby because God said I must eat God said I must be provided for so so I don't have a problem yeah 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 you can you, you can criticize my eating manners but I'm eating what the Lord has provided for me <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen I am your Elijah and I am your Moses. And I did not call myself. I did not know that I was called. I was surprised when you called me. I never planned. My mother never heard me saying that when I grow up I want to be a pastor. No, it was not in my plans but it was in the plans of God. And when God called me, he was not thinking about me, but he was thinking about you guys. That's it. When God was speaking to Moses at a burning bush, Israel was not there. But God was speaking about Israel to Moses. They did not even hear that. The whole entire thing about Moses is not about Moses. It's about Israel. Everything Moses does, it's about Israel. Because that is his life. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. As pastors who are truly called by God, we can be poor, we can divorce, we can lose everything, but if we lose our calling, it hits us to depression. The calling is so much important that God chooses the calling over marriage. He chooses the calling of a career. The calling of God, oh my God, I don't know how can I explain this to you. The calling of God is something that a person who's called cannot divorce. Can divorce the wife, but not the calling. Because this thing is stuck with you all the time. Look at, Jer look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I will not preach again. I will not speak about your name again. And then when he has said that, then, then the, one, the next verse, he's crying. He said, uh, I said, I will not. But this thing is burning in my bones. It's burning like fire in my bones. The calling is something else. 
if, listen, listen, if I don't do this, I can't think right. If I don't do this, I cannot, I cannot be myself. When, when I preach, I am discharging so that I can be myself, so that I can be comfortable with myself. I am discharging because this thing is not me that chose it, but it chose me and I cannot divorce it. Even when I try to run away from it, it still comes to me. calling can, can I tell you something sometimes we wish to be as ordinary as believers as everybody we wish but this thing we can't take it off this thing we can't take it off sometimes you try I resigned many times in my heart in ministry I resigned I'm telling you many times but this thing will come in the dreams at night I said I, I said I this is, this is, uh, are you hearing me? Huh? This thing is so dangerous that Jonah, when God calls you, when God calls you and you run away, you put people in danger. The boats will go through storm because of you. I wish I could talk to you. Did you hear what I said to you? When God calls you, when God sends you to, to, to Nineveh, when God calls you and you go your own way, you put other people's lives in danger calling is very dangerous and when God calls the Bible says the callings of God are without repentance in other words when God has called you he does not change his mind you can change your mind you can go to Tashi she will wait for you don't ever think when you come back there he has changed his mind no 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 this thing is so strong that you are eaten by fish. You are swallowed by fish. There are different fishes that will swallow you. Yeah? And, and when you are swallowed by fish, you cry. Jonah said that I cried in the belly of the fish. I cried. Many of us, we come to the belly of different fish and we cry. Different circumstances that swallow us. If we don't do what is said that we must do. Souls are the priority to God. We are called because of souls, because of your souls. Now, because of that, then it's important for the church to prioritize, to prioritize the call. In other words, you should treat us in a way that we don't worry about nothing but about teaching his word. Because if we have needs and I'm worried about the school fees and everything, how can I have revelations? I wish I could talk to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not sure you understand me. Eh? If I have need and there are things that are worrying me, how can I be powerful? How can I hear from God? How can I preach to you? If I'm broken because of life, because I don't have enough supplies that I need in my life, how can I be a blessing to you? So Paul puts it this way to those who say we must go to work. I'm still refusing again. Facebook, I refuse. I'm not going to work. He says that as we give you spiritual things, he says we make many other people rich as he says as we teach you and give you spiritual things he says you should give us material i wish i could talk to you ladies and gentlemen men of god must have material must be full of material you must be happy that your pastor has material if you understand, if you have a revelation. Ah. So in other, the world says, oh, the pastor is driving a good car. It's people's money. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, pastor, that's the issue. Even when it comes from your business, they say, still say, it doesn't matter, you can have business, but as long as you're a pastor, they say people's money. All right. But as for me, yes, I do have businesses, but people's money, that's good. 
If you say people's money is from me to me, it's good. That's what God wants. No, that's what God wants. I check the word, that's what he wants. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I'm closing. That's what he wants. I give you spiritual things. You can go to the, that verse as well so they, they know I'm not lying. And the Bible says, you give the one who teaches you the word material things. It's your duty as the church to do that. It's your duty as a church to make sure that a pastor has a house, a pastor has a car, a pastor, it's your duty. It's your duty. I'm, I'll say it again. It is your duty. Isn't the car material? Isn't the house material? Isn't the clothes material? Isn't the food material? No. The man of God should not be in poverty because that is not a good thing to you. A man of God is the face of the church. How would you want your pastor to be represented? Huh? You want him to drive a Skoro Koro car to know that, hey, a man of God is anointed. He's so humble. I don't want to be a humble pastor. So humble, eh? I met my pastor. He's so humble. You are proud of that thing? No. What you wish for yourself, you must do it to your pastor. The principle of first things. Every time I come to you guys, I need to know that I am prioritized. I need to know that we are in this together. I need to know that we are speaking one word. You know, when we were, uh, listen guys, when we teach, it takes time. When you preach, it's, it's short. You just go, hey, 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 hey. 30 minutes is short. When you teach, you need to right? You get it? You need to get layer by layer and when you teach, right? It takes more time. So don't, don't complain about time. Now listen to this. The first church that I planted, we were, got the wonderful building, we renovated the place, got, because I was prioritized the church could renovate the place, could even put air conditioners. Can you believe a building with air conditioners in township? Tell me, which church have you ever seen with air conditioners in township? But we had air conditioners in the church. All right? And when we came to that building, it was, we came probably in the same month or in the same Easter Passover of that year, the church bought me a new brand new Mercedes ML 350. New, I mean, a smelling car. We will get into it. It smells new. <laughs> Nobody has ever owned it. I'm the first one to own it. Let me tell you what happened. Then God said to me, Do a one o'clock service for all the people who are not working in the church. I did the the, the, the one o'clock service. Let me tell you what happened. The one o'clock service, many people came in numbers. But the, the one o'clock service was closed. You know why? Because everybody got a job. Then there was no need to meet. Then we, we closed it. Those were there. We still remember. We closed it. Why? Because I was prioritized. Then God began to move into the life of people like never before. At that church, there was a time where I knew nobody slept hungry. I'm talking, I'm not sure, I'm not joking. 
Nobody slept hungry. God met the needs. Testimonies were, yeah. When we say testimony, we had to arrange people and say well, you are gonna you're gonna testify next week. When the next time the other one is gonna, you know, because there were too much people. Because God was doing great things. Why? Because Moses had a place to sit, and Moses occupied his position, and Moses was the first. And the church allowed Moses to take his position without content. You get it? Ladies and gentlemen, the economic situation of the world is shaking. Only the promises of God can keep us and provide us and, and, you know, and take us to higher levels because God can do it. In every country, I, I've traveled to poorest countries in Africa. In all those countries, there are millionaires. I mean, believers who are millionaires. How do you become a millionaire in a country that is poor? God can make it, can do it. So, ladies and gentlemen, the principle of what? Of first things. Let's do that, let's do that, and let's see God taking us from one place of power to another one. In Jesus' name, clap hands for Jesus.